Hello everyone and welcome back to Space's Hard Vacuum episode 12 with Cerberus, where we are seeing, of course, the final stage of the manned mission that I had the most of the first bit of in uh, episode 11. We will finally see now if our friend Rogel Kerman, or is it Rugel Kerman, will make it home safe. And I do apologize for the slight tardiness of this week's episode. I, uh, of course, you know, naturally, as is, uh, as is KSP's way when it's heavily modded like this, I was having some very serious issues, but I ended up being able to get enough done, so to speak, um, over the course of Monday night that I had, I had the edited product for the most part. Um, I had a little bit of post-production left to do this evening, Tuesday evening, which of course I've gotten finished, and then the voiceover phase, which takes a little while as well. And now we, uh, obviously you're watching this now, so we are rocking and rolling. Um, not only was KSP giving me a, a, a bit of trouble this weekend, but uh, my, uh, my computer in general was having some slight issues. I had uh, I picked up a new video card. I had upgraded from a GeForce, um, a GTX 560 Ti up to a GTX 760, which in and of itself is not a huge upgrade, but uh, it was the beginnings of a longer term plan to uh, eventually upgrade to having two GTX 760s in SLI. Which, you know, isn't necessarily something I need for KSP, because uh, even with the even with the prettiest textures and whatnot and effects around, it's more so, it tends to be a CPU thing, uh, with all the physics being calculated and whatnot. But anyway, of course there are other games I play other than KSP. Shock, horror, blasphemy, <laughs> but... Um, so that, that, of course pose some problems because the new card was defective. So I wasted basically an entire day troubleshooting that and finally deciding that it was no good, uh, getting an RMA together for it to send it back to where I bought it from, and of course putting the old card back in. So that, uh, that took up quite a bit of my precious weekend time, much to my frustration, but, you know, better late than never, I suppose, and uh, thankfully I actually had all of this footage that I had filmed the previous weekend and chosen to hold for episode 12 instead of using in episode 11. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I might not have really had anything. I might have had like a five-minute video or something like that. But as it is, we have this to observe. Um, not that it's a whole lot of action, nothing exploded, which is a good thing. Maybe not the best entertainment, but, you know, it's good for the science and the space program. And so now he's... I mean, he's still sailing at a few kilometers per second, but he's not going fast enough to, you know, have the whole fireball thing going on anymore. So he'll just kind of plummet for a while longer, as we've uh, as we've seen plenty of times. And pretty soon the chute will deploy, and we'll have all that good... Uh, all that standard splashdown kind of stuff going on, as we end up actually fairly close to where we started. Uh, we're landing, you know, in in the in sort of the, the Caribbean here, just south and east of Florida. That's not bad, considering that's I wasn't even trying. I had no intent on that at all. And here is the final part of this flight, which again I. Thank God I actually had filmed beforehand, because it, it might not have happened if I'd had to do it this, uh, just this past weekend. Um, ever since point two four came out, my uh, Steam, since I have a Steam installation, has wanted increasingly desperately to update my KSP for me. And on one occasion it did, but I had a backup kind of install copy which I selectively copied over, because the saves weren't really up to date, but you know, I got it working again, and that was fine. And then the hot fixes, 0.24.1, and then 0.24.2 came out, and uh, 0.23.5 was just flagged as being straight up deprecated, and Steam was saying, update required. And I couldn't launch the game through Steam without it trying to update it, so... 
you know, luckily a direct shortcut to the to the application to the ksp.exe itself works. And so I was doing okay with that. And then I mean whether it was from updating a few other mods or maybe I missed or caught too late when Steam was trying to be you know sneaky and ninja update my KSP. I'm not sure exactly what it was. But uh, it culminated this past weekend in basically nothing working and the real solar system config being half broken. Um, Moho was still in Mercury's orbit, but uh, Eve, Kerbin, and Duna were in their stock orbits around a real solar system sun. And that planet factory planet, Ablate, which orbits the stock sun quite closely, was orbiting the real sun very closely. And its orbital velocity was something like 330 kilometers per second. It was insane. But in any case, th th there was enough wrong that it would have taken me too long to figure, to track it all down and make it all work to get much more than what I already had saved from the previous week. Like this, the final descent of the first ever unmanned lunar lander, whose mission is to get some science in the absence of much else to do while we wait for transfer windows for uh, a Mercury probe that I had designed, as well as, of course, the realistic progression trees Mars and Venera 1 missions, which are quite a ways away yet because the next transfer window is measured in months or years from now. So, I mean, there's just like in stock KSP, there's, you know, whatever there is, 15 biomes on the moon. Uh, because it still has custom biomes, doesn't really work with the real solar system moon yet, so we have stock biomes. So you can't really tell where they are. Touchdown of our probe. First thing we've ever landed in a controlled fashion on the moon. It's time to get some science. And as past me does that, I'll keep going with my present me ramble before I forget what I was talking about. Actually, I think I'm in the process of that right now. I'm trying to grab it back. I think it might actually be gone. <laughs> oh well, isn't that interesting? You actually witness yourself forgetting what you were thinking or talking about. Um, RPL, Mars and the Nero probes, transfer windows were a long ways away. And... Right, custom biomes. Uh, works for Kerbin. Kerbin has Earth biomes. But nothing else has custom biomes, really. So you can't tell where the moon's biomes are, because they're not reflective of our real, our realistic, our real moon. You know, you have the northwest crater and the twin craters and the, the lowlands, the highlands, the midlands, which you could probably do low, mid, and highlands on, in a custom biomes moon, but you'd have to, of course, have biomes for your, your, your large craters and your, like the Sea of Tranquility and that kind of stuff, which we don't have. But that was the idea. However, what I'm showing you now, this is the news section. The headline is Cerberus updates KSP to 0.24 on purpose. 0.24 means the addition of the 64-bit capability. 64-bit capability means the lifting of the 4 gigabyte, or less actually, memory address limit on applications, 32-bit applications. The lifting of that memory limit means packing basically as many rich, high-res textures in as you can possibly get the game to run on without having to use active texture management or any other sort of texture optimization or compression utility. And the result is what you see before you. A serenely spinning, fantastic looking planet Earth with 2K and 4K textures. Um, I forget which are which. 
I think the clouds are 4K. The surface itself might only be 2K, though I think there are 4K ones available. I'm not sure which I chose, but either way, it's still, look at that, a huge improvement. Just an insanely big visual improvement on just how Earth looks compared to how it did with the, you know, the compressed, reduced, almost butchered textures that I had to run. I, I think it was maybe 512 by 512 was the texture resolution that it was painting onto the Earth and painting onto the moon and all sorts of other things. And so this, again, is a at least a 2K texture. And just look at that. That is, that is what I properly had always hoped I could get this to look like. And I was really settling, as we see Mercury there, too, which kind of looks a lot like the moon, really. <laughs> it's about the same size, too, I think. Um, actually, I think the moon's, or I think Mercury is smaller, but what I forget right now, I'm just pulling that out of thin air. Um, Venus is missing its atmosphere, you know, the hazy cloud stuff. I'm using, I have to use in 0.24, it's sort of an in development new version of environmental visual enhancements, which is what allows for the clouds and things like the city lights, which I don't have there at all yet, still on Earth, of course. Um, if there were any on Mars, I'd be concerned. Um, Jupiter, just look at that. Look at that. I mean, it looked cool just looking like Jupiter. If you go back to one of my first videos for my realistic space program, kind of the predecessor to this Space is Hard Vacuum series, I mean, it was like, hey, look, it looks like Jupiter instead of Jewel. That's awesome. But it just doesn't compare <laughs> to the sharpness and the detail and just the just the epic appearance of everything and here's Jupiter's major moons and they all just look beautiful as well with these insanely high res textures it's just great not having to use actor texture management as much as I love it was a great utility it enabled me to do this in the first place in 0.23.5 with all the extra textures and all that kind of thing uh, without it, this that wouldn't have been possible in the first place. There would never have been a series. But it remains that it was something that I had to use as a consequence of limitation on the game. And that limitation provided the stability of the actual application holds as I throw more and more mods at it. That limitation is gone. The limitation is now the amount of RAM my computer has, essentially. Of course, if you really start loading it up with gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of textures and stuff, something's bound to get unstable at some point. But I mean, my computer has 16 gigabytes of RAM. There's people with more, but 16 is lots. So I have a lot of room to play with now that we have 64-bit KSP available to us. Now, what does that mean? Or, well, we can already see a bunch of what that means for the Space's Hard Vacuum series. Of course, there are drawbacks here as well. One of those being that not all of the mods I had been using are available yet. Look at that, look at those clouds. Isn't that something? That looks way better <laughs> than it has. Go look at any of my launches in past episodes and that alone is almost worth whatever weight that there ends up having to be to wait for these mods to be upgraded to 0 0.24, 0 0.2 compatible versions. Most of the core mods are. Real Solar System, of course, is. But you may have noticed Planet Factory is not. Uh, you know, Jupiter and Saturn, well, Saturn definitely didn't have as many moons. Uh, you know, a bunch of those planetary bodies didn't quite work. And here's another drawback. Uh, there are still some bugs yet in 64-bit KSP and this environmental visual enhancements and whatnot with the, either the cloud texture or the world texture is just going insane. I don't even know if this is a mod issue or a game issue, but in any case, 64-bit is brand new. It's a whole big new adventure for us all, modders, players, YouTubers alike. And we're going to run into issues like what you just saw there. But all in all, I'm still super excited um, 
even with the the prospect of potentially having to wait a while to really get much more done in the Spaces Hard Vacuum series. Uh, like I was saying, Real Solar System is done, but Planet Factory is not. So I still can't get, you know, the, the richer, fuller solar system that I had. Deadly Reentry is ready, Fair Marrow Space is ready, a lot of the core mods are ready, but a lot of the parts packs aren't. I don't have Nova Punch rockets, I don't have AIES anything. Um, you know, a, a lot of those major parts packs that, that I had been using are not yet available. So we are still waiting on some of those. Uh, in the meantime, however, with, with most of the core mods, that does leave the possibility of me doing something else in the meantime while we wait, because I can still have most of the realism. That, that's most of the mods that enhance the realism are there. Perhaps in part because most of those are maintained by the same three people, by and large. Um, so there is still that. I haven't quite decided what that's going to be yet. Possibly just a... a maybe just a stock tech tree, or an interstellar tech tree, but real solar system playthrough, or part of one. You know, because this is going to be temporary. I am going back to Space's Hard Vacuum. Space's Hard Vacuum is not over. The idea is not over. I am, I do intend completely to do... Uh, you know, a playthrough where I start off with 1950 level tech and take it all the way to warp drive. That was the whole idea, and I'm still going to do that. In fact, now there's even more potential for me to do that in a much, in a much more visually rich and, you know, just a nicer looking setting, if nothing else. And I'm going to do that even if, in the worst case, my old save won't work. I will start over, and I will try to play up to the point I was at as much as I can, as quickly as I can. I don't, so that, you know, I don't want to have to make everybody watch the same first twelve episodes over again if I end up having to do that. But whatever the case may be, however it ends up playing out, this series is continuing. If in fact I am even more excited to continue on with it excited enough that I don't mind waiting, and I hope that most of you won't mind waiting a little while either for the for the mods generally and the stability of the of the game to catch up a bit so that I can uh, hit the ground running again. I don't have an ETA. Um, maybe a bunch of stuff is ready next week and I can go. Maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's a month. Uh, if it does look like it's going to be a long time, I will have something up at least once a week in the meantime. Probably KSP related. I might even throw up some extra stuff because I do things other than play KSP. I spend a lot of time on my computer, but I play games other than Kerbal Space Program, and maybe I'll show you guys a little bit of that. We'll see. It's all very much up in the air. The only thing that is for certain is that as soon as I feel that it's ready, the game, the mods, Space's Hard Vacuum will be going on. The show will and must go on. And I look forward to having you guys with me still when that happens. And I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing sort of the, the new, improved, much better looking and feeling Space's Hard Vacuum and Real Solar System and KSP itself. And of course, I hope you guys are having a lot of fun playing Point Two Four. Uh, and, you know, I plan on finally getting in on that myself. I was holding myself back, and now I can finally try the, the new career mode, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thank you all very much for watching as many of you as as you have been as long as you have been uh, i hope to see many more of you i hope to see you all back i hope to see you all continuing to enjoy whatever it is that i decide to try and offer you in the meantime and of course thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time